Here are the top 10 Wireshark filters for network security analysis and troubleshooting. A quick disclaimer before we start. This video is for educational purposes only. In a real world scenario, capturing network traffic requires permission and following ethical guidelines. Never capture traffic on a network you don't have authorization to access. With Wireshark already running, let's capture the packets on the Wi-Fi interface. So just double click on the interface. Now it's going to start capturing data, any traffic that's on that interface coming in or going out, any activity it can see, it will capture. For us to generate some data that we're going to use for this analysis, We'll start by generating some HTTP traffic and we'll provide a login credential with login credentials on a web page. So, so I have my browser here. There is a network emulation system that I have running, a software that I have running on one of the VMs on my home network. And the IP of that is 192.168.0.25. If I hit enter, I am provided with a web page, which you can see says uh, it's not secure. So this is running on a VM on my uh, machine here at home. So username is uh, admin for this page, and then I will enter the password, sign in to the computer. I have a topology I was uh, working on, and it's it's there. So let's let's minimize this that traffic is being captured. While Wireshark is still running, let's generate some ICMP packets. So ICMP is just ping. So I have this, my terminal on the on my computer that has Wireshark running. So we can just easily generate ICMP packets by pinging, you know, the particular IP address. So 192.168.0.25 zero dot 25 that's the ip address of the remote server that's that's the server that has uh, the emulator running the so I hit enter with that with ping going so i'm able to get some data from uh, icmp we can just cancel and and minimize that that's it. And the other traffic we can generate is to open a secure uh, website. So we can just go to uh, youtube.com, for example. And, uh, well, we can go to just my my YouTube channel anyway. And it, it doesn't really matter, just, just so we can generate some traffic. That's it. Let's also generate some SSH traffic. Keep in mind that this Wireshark is capturing all this, all the activity we're doing, all the things we're doing. Wireshark is capturing the data. Let's generate some SSH traffic as well. And we can do that by connecting to a remote server, which is on this network. Same server we used for the web interface. So we can connect to that server as root SSH as root to the IP address of the server 0 0.25. Hit enter. Yes, do we trust this? Yes, we do. What's the password? We'll provide the password. And let's see. Yep, we're in. So it's we're on the uh, if ng uh, machine. So now we have some data. We have enough data, I would say, enough packets to start our analysis using the top 10 filters. So to stop this, just click on the red button, stop. Now we've, we are done capturing packets. So let's start. I can minimize this even, okay, okay, that's fine. So let's start. So the first filter is to identify specific devices using their IP address. So you just come here and type, specify using IP address. So you can say IP, address we are just ip add r and you say is equal you specify the ip address you want you're looking for if you want to see the activity or so 0 0.3 0 i'm using 0 0.3 because that's the ip address of the 
client the laptop that has Wireshark installed on it. So if I hit enter, you can see all the activity, all the places the IP address appears where it's either sending data or receiving data. So here it's sending, it's the source, this is the destination, this is the protocol. You, you can filter based on that. The next filter is to use the URI. So what I mean by that, the uniform resource identifier can be used to capture login credentials if a web page is not uh, secure. So let's say we have uh, a particular data, which already, which we do, you can use the filter HTTP. You're filtering the HTTP request, right? So HTTP request, then the URI. We want to check if the URI contains any keyword with uh, the, the keyword login. So hit enter. You can see we have uh, some data. Let me try to expand this. So you can see we have uh, something here from source this is the particular uh, system we try to connect from to the web page and the protocol http what we're interested in is uh, interested in is this uh, the post where this a get request and then a post request on this we can right click on this and just say follow tcp stream and we can just search so this will give us uh, a lot of uh, information, but specifically what we're looking for is any passwords or login usernames or passwords. So you can find here, say, just find with the keyword password. So if we find with password, let's see where password appears. Yes, up here, you can see password. So you see it says username. So the username I entered, that's admin. And then the password I provided was if so this is essentially the information we entered and the, the date, uh, the time, everything is going to show you uh, when the activity uh, took place. So next, let's close this. The next filter we are going to look at is if you want to focus on specific services. So for example, uh, you want to diagnose problems with common services, e.g. slow website loading on port 80. So we can just say TCP, a filter, TCP dot port. We want to specify port 80, for instance, any activity on that port. So you can see all the traffic on that used uh, port 80. And it's essentially traffic between our server. That's the server that's hosting the uh, network emulation software that we tested with the login credentials. And then the machine that is running uh, Wireshark. That's essentially this machine itself. Uh, that's the Mac M2 MacBook uh, Pro. So that's the activity. You will see the protocol that it's been used, TCP and then HTTP. You, you, you get to see that if you filter based on that. You can also uh, filter based on SSH, so port 22 for any unusual traffic that probably someone is trying to SSH into your machines and you're not sure. So hit enter TCP dot port uh, double equal sign 22. You have the SSH traffic. So you can see a uh, protocol, for example, let's take the first one from source, this source destination, it's trying to send this uh, uh, traffic. But if you come down to where SSH appears, it says from this client to this server, and this is, it's using the protocol SSH uh, version two. So you can follow this through if you need more details, just double click to see what protocol is being used, what the version and, you know, other information that are available. You can see the destination port number from the source port, which is uh, randomly, dynamically generated. Okay, let's go to the next filter. Next, we can filter on usual traffic on internal network. So these filters can highlight traffic patterns potentially associated with malicious activity. So we can use, say, IP address. We've seen the IP address filter before, but this time we are going to specify, first we're going to specify what IP address we are interested in. So the IP address is 1.0.0.3 and we are going to add a particular protocol so either address resolution protocol or icmp protocol for ping so 
uh, this way we're, we're filtering based on these two protocols hit enter then you can see where icmp requests you know were sent and where replies were received you know we 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 generated some icmp packets for this purpose and that's for uh, that's when we pinged from the client to the server client here is the 192.168.0.3 and then the server is 192.168.0.25 you can see a query request was sent and then a, a reply was uh, sent back to the uh, uh, the client there isn't any arp activity going on based on this uh, filter we just used so another filter you can use is to track communication flow so the com flow of communication between uh, specific devices so for example you can specify an ip address to say ip dot address i want to specify a particular source uh, ip address equal 192.168.0.0.3 so if you want to specify a particular source ip address 0 0.3 and ip address of and IP address of a particular destination host, if you know the, the IP. So 192.168.0.25, the ones we used, we've used earlier. So this is the source IP first, which is 192.168.0.3, and IP dot address, and IP dot address dot add r, you specify equal this. So if if the filter isn't accepted you would you would notice that the background is red so if i clear this for example now if i hit enter it's not going to work because it's not accepted as a valid filter so 0 0.25 hit enter it's just going to show us the flow of activity flow of uh, packets between these two hosts where at any given point in time, 1.26.0.25 is acting as the client, which is the source, for instance, and then uh, at in some cases it's acting as the destination. So you can see you follow and see what type of protocol is being used, what's the length, and what information you can get from that. It depends on uh, what use case you're looking for. And another filter, the next one is for you to find specific dns traffic using port number so dns traffic dns uses uh, udp so udp dot destination uh, destination ds dst port so destination port you specify dns uses port number 53 so hit enter you see the out the output is any uh, traffic packets that uh, made use of the dns protocol and you can follow that to uh, get any useful information you're uh, looking at you're looking for so in the same manner you can make use of source port so we can just go back here rather than destination you can use source src source port, port hit enter so it's going to focus on where the source source port source of the uh, uh, ip is source of the packet is port 53 so this is coming from 192.168.0.1 which is my default gateway on the local network and this 192.168.0.3 is the server it's the client that has uh, wireshark installed on it so another filter is to focus on a specific time frame so for example if you want to know what activity has what packets has uh, been captured in a particular time frame you can use frame dot time so you are specifying the frame frame dot time and any time that is not that is greater than or equal to so any time that is not beyond say let's for example january 1st right 2024 so if we say january 1st 2024 we specify what time the time normal uh, time as in hour minutes and uh, seconds Right, so if we specify this, if you hit enter, we get some data because today is actually at March 10th, 2024. So let's say we try to search based on a date that has, well, that hasn't, uh, we, that, that, that is a date beyond uh, today. So say March 11th, which 
essentially is tomorrow hit enter you can see there's nothing there's no capture so but you can specify you can play with this and specify essentially exactly what you another filter we can use is to combine filters for advanced troubleshooting so uh, what i mean by that we've combined filters before but we can use this in a different way we can combine filters for example tcp port we are looking for wherever tcp port 443 you know is and also any ip address that is using that tcp port 443 uh, ip address specifically if this ip address we're specifying the ip address here 192.168.0.3 if this IP address is using port 443, if this combination is true, if this expression is true, then give us wherever it's happening. So you can see there is TLS uh, communication, uh, TCP. We we have this client trying to get on web servers, you know, uh, on, on servers on the internet using negotiating uh, TLS uh, encryption. So the TLS handshake procedure is being uh, followed here to get uh, things like acknowledgement requests being sent and synchronization of tcp packets as well so another filter we can use is to find unusual packet sizes so usually ethernet should be around 1500 bytes for, ex for example so we can uh, find like a length so maybe ip the filter is ip dot len so n l e n so any packet that is greater than 1500 in this case, 1000, the length is 1000. If it's greater than 1500, hit enter. You see, there's no packet that is in that range. So, but let's say something, let's put something below 1000. So, 1400. So, you can see with um, the length of the packets that is greater than, I mean, not uh, less than, uh, greater than 1400, then you would see that it's 1500 essentially and uh, any packets that is greater than but you can tweak this however you want to specify it depends on your particular use case finally you can filter out an ip address that you don't want to see in the output so what i mean by that is you can use ip address but in this case rather than saying equal to the not equal to so you use uh, not equal to you specify the IP address you don't want to see. So 192.168.0.3, for example, and you hit enter. It's going to filter out that IP address. Any IP address that is being shown from either source to destination is going to exclude that particular IP address. Of course, there are many other filters you can use in terms of carrying out network security analysis, but these are some of the common ones that I use. And that's it, essentially. I would like to thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.